I'm Danny Austin and I'm a content creator. It's amazing to have you here, Danny, because you are one of the earliest uh, influencers. <laughs> You've been posting since 2012. 2012. Yeah, and we actually have um, your earliest post that we could find. No. Oh my God. <laughs> that was New York City. Yes, hook them. University of Texas, love it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so how did you get your start as a creator, you know, even yeah. before being a creator was a thing? Right, so I started because my brother was a musician on YouTube. So he actually had like a talent and I fell in love with his space, like his community. And they started asking, do you have a sister? Like, you know, he started posting me in some of his videos. And then I secretly started posting YouTube videos like from my dorm room, because you have to understand this is like before people took selfies or posted anything online. So I was like kind of embarrassed, but I just love the community. So like I literally would like hide and edit my videos underneath the covers and stuff. So I kind of had this like secret life online. And, you know, after a couple months, I had like 100,000 followers was, you know, getting reached out to by, you know, managers in LA. And so I just called my parents and I was like, hey, you know, I know I'm supposed to be a physical therapist after school, but I think it would be a YouTuber. And they were like, a what? Like, <laughs> what is that? Um, so anyway, it's, it's been nine years since then, kind of transitioned to all the different social platforms as they've come out. And so it's been a wild ride. It's been fun. Yeah, seriously. I mean, you've come a really long way <laughs> from your dorm room and hiding under your covers making videos. <laughs> Forbes estimates that you made $8.2 million last year mm -hmm. as a professional influencer. That makes you one of the highest paid creators in the world. Talk about turning your life's major events into major business. Yeah, I mean, I feel like with my audience, I've just kind of, as I grow, as I evolve, whether it's, you know, getting engaged or getting married, like I share everything. And what I've found is through the most mundane points of life, that's whenever I can connect with my audience the best. And so it's been really fun to like, kind of just grow up with my girls right now. You know, I'm a female entrepreneur, you know, married, have two kids, two babies under two, but I'm also potty training. So it's like, you get a little bit of everything and it's been, so great. I think what I love the most is just that connection that I have with my girls. We can be real. We can be vulnerable. We can talk about the highs, the lows, and like exciting things like this. Yeah, you're really big on vulnerability. Um, your most popular post um, is about your journey with hair loss. Mm -hmm. So you've been super open about that, and you've also been able to turn that into a big brand. Mm -hmm. Divi, your hair loss serum, uh, we're estimating made $4 million last year. Talk about turning your real struggles into real money. So, I mean, to me, I never really looked at it as a business. It really started as something that I struggled with myself. And I felt like, okay, if I can wear these vulnerabil vulnerabilities or these, you know, things that I'm going through, these challenges on my sleeve, then maybe I can use it creatively to lighten other people's burdens and lighten other people's kind of suffering, whatever they're going through. And so it really started with me just being vulnerable about, you know, hair loss. And I had started just with stress, kind of pulling my hair out. And then over time, you know, wore hair extensions, everything. And then I just had, you know, I looked in the mirror and I was married and I told my husband, I'm like, I don't even have any more hair. And this is, I don't even feel feminine anymore. So my husband took me to a wig shop. You know, we finally, after trial and error, found a wig and I was able to share that with my community. And it was like this impact that I felt was just it was like mind blowing. And so since then, um, you know, I started to actually focus on what was like the core issue. And I started playing with ingredients in my bathroom, like going to Whole Foods, different oils, that sort of thing. And it really worked for me. And so my audience really wanted the product. So I really created Divi just for my girls because I really wanted to take care of them and had no idea that it would kind of have this like word of mouth effect where people just started sending it to their you know, neighbor down the street or their mom or their best friend. And so I think what's been so special is that this is a brand that kind of speaks for itself because all of the before and after pictures, all of the testimonies, you know, that's something that we never really asked for. People just were excited about it and started sharing it to help other people too. And so it was just very heartfelt. It was like, it started really small and what it's grown into has just been, it's been mind blowing, very humbling, like very thankful for the experience. You more than a lot of other uh, creators, I feel like you do a great job of seamlessly transitioning from talking about your life and being really uh, personable about your babies and your husband and your life 
and then into something that you're selling and marketing. Talk yeah. a little bit about how you've been able to do that. Yeah, I mean, I think I'm just transparent with my girls. I think they know I'm a three on the internet. And when you say your girls, you mean oh, my your audience. followers. Yeah, okay. I mean, we. I call my girls because they're like my girls. I always envision myself, like whenever I'm talking about a product or you know sharing an outfit, I envision myself like shopping with them and thinking about, okay, if we're at the checkout line together, like are they gonna love this? It's kind of like hanging out with your best friend. And so, um, no, it's been really special. I feel like what I do when I wake up in the morning, I'm like, this is a reality TV show. I film like right when I get out of bed all the way till like dinner time and um, just kind of walk through my day with them. And like I said, it's like when you connect with people, it's usually through vulnerability. It's not through like the fancy moments in life. You know, it's not through the perfect Instagram or the perfect video or all the production. It's through like the challenges. It's through hair loss. It's through anxiety. It's through marriage, you know, uh, you know, advice, that sort of thing. And so it's been really special to use the platform to kind of help people in that way. Yeah, you're famously someone who is very helpful. I mean, you help people navigate um, Amazon, Nordstrom sales, <laughs> et cetera, like just totally. really regular stuff. Um, that's different than a lot of other fashion influencers who have been very high end. Yeah. Talk about just being the everyday yeah. woman. Well, that's how I grew up. I mean, I grew up going to Walmart for my back to school clothes, Forever 21. And so I just feel like that is very authentic to me. And as I've grown, you know, I get a little into some more like designer items and that sort of thing, but that's just kind of who I am. And I feel like that's what works for me is whenever I'm true to who I am, I'm like, what gets me going is like a good sale. Like that's what I get really passionate about. And so that's what I love to share with my girls. And it's clearly working for you. <laughs> um, but your broad appeal has also garnered some criticism. This one photo that you're featured in has become a total <laughs> viral meme. Love it. Um, can you respond to that criticism? One of, uh, one of my favorite photos. So the funny thing about that trip was we were on a brand trip and they dressed us all. So that's why we all look the same. Um, but no, like I love it. And that was one of, there's so many different memes out there. And I think it's like, what I have to do is I just embrace the criticism. I'm like, you know what? I probably am really basic. Like I do like going to Starbucks and I do love a latte and that sort of thing. So you kind of just like go with it, go with the flow. Well, there's really nothing basic about making $8.2 million a year. So <laughs> I'm, it's working for you. Um, and another thing about, you know, this, the brand that you've created is you're really open about your relationship with God and mm -hmm. religion. How has that impacted your relationship with your followers? So I think it actually has really built my, um, trust with my followers. I think that they know what I stand for. They know, um, what drives me. They know that my main goal with my platform is to honestly take all the, the resources and the blessings that God has given me and, um, use it to love on other people. And so I think that through YouTube, it's been such a blessing because there's so many creative ways that you can do that, whether it's through like a fun giveaway or, you know, getting in your DMs and just going like really deep with girls or, you know, calling them and wishing them happy birthday. Like everything that I do is derived from my faith. And, and I think that they also know that we can agree to disagree, but they know like at the end of the day, we can go get a margarita. We can go chill. We can hang out. Even if we have different views, um, that's what it's all about for me. You have two babies now. I do. How has having two children affected the relationship you have with your fans? Were you worried, you know, when you got pregnant, you knew that this was yeah. going to be a huge part of your personal brand that maybe some fans would leave? Right. You know, I never worried about that. Um, in fact, I feel like after having two kids, I just have like a better view on life in general. I'm like way more efficient with my time. There's so much like more heart behind like what we're actually doing on a day-to-day -day basis. And so I feel like it really leveled me out um, and also kind of put everything into perspective. You know, whenever you're on Instagram and you're seeing how many views or the DMs or anything, it's like at the end of the day, like I gotta go change a diaper yeah. and like this is what matters most. And so, um, so no, I think it's actually been really special for, uh, we call them like their Instagram aunties because there's so many amazing, you know, moms out there that are always giving us great feedback and love our kids too, so it's sweet. Instagram has been hugely important to you. Um, and Instagram is changing. It seems like it's kind of trying to be TikTok with right. its push into video. Mm -hmm. How does this affect you? Does it affect you? Sure, I mean, of course it affects me. Um, I have seen the shift and I feel the shift. Um, since launching Divi, it's been more challenging to create so much content because we're also running a company, but I love reels. Like I, 
whenever it came out, I was like, yes, like this, because it kind of brings me back to my mm -hmm. YouTube roots. And so I'm excited about it. You have to understand at the end of the day, like it's probably always going to be shifting. You're always going to have to be on your toes. And so I just kind of get excited about the challenge. Right. And one of the big shifts culturally is now 86% of kids are saying that they are down to be influencers according to a 2019 poll. Wild. It's wild. Yeah. I mean, think about where you started. Like right. Exactly. <laughs> so what advice would you give to young people who are hoping to make it as influencers and, you know, they look at your career and they're like, I want that. Yeah. I mean, I think that you have to have something like deeper that's driving you. It's not to me just about having like the next viral video because the true challenge is, is like, okay, you can have a viral video, but can you have people stick around? Like, and I think the biggest thing that influencers sometimes don't understand is like, this is a service based industry. Like you're creating content for people to help people out. And I think a lot of times influencers think, okay, it's all about me. It's all about what I can put out there like my next Instagram, but it's like, how is that really affecting your people? Like, how is that actually changing their behavior or helping them out or serving them? And so I always think about kind of your audience, your content and your girls or my girls before anything. Yeah, I'm glad that you used the word service because I feel like that is hugely what your content is about. Um, one of the things that you do that's really interesting is you have an Amazon fashion page where people can uh, shop your picks, you do LTK. Mm -hmm. Talk about um, talk about your relationship with Amazon. I'm curious to know more about the relationship between Amazon and influencers. So, I mean, Amazon is great. I think during uh, the pandemic, like everyone was kind of shopping on Amazon because it was easier to get things delivered to you. And so I use Amazon as just like a total mom. Like I'm getting all of my groceries, I'm getting all of my, you know, stain removers, Windex, that sort of thing. And so I use Amazon as like a way to serve families and moms out there that just don't have time to go to the grocery store, that sort of thing. And of course you can find some really great like fashion deals and that's in, um, you know, cute outfits and it's been fun. How do you feel about fast fashion in general? Yeah, um, so I, I do post a lot of Amazon fashion, but um, you know, it's more like workout outfits, that sort of thing. What I've loved the most about sharing fashion is actually connecting with the small businesses on Instagram. There's a lot of small business owners that will send me really cute monogram t-shirts and, or like one of my favorites is there's a brand, they are like a mom and pa shop and they're making these candles out of their garage and found them randomly, fell in love with them and was able to share them. And they're literally like growing so much. They just got a new office space, all That's these awesome. things. And so, um, although there's some like really quick ways to find products. I think my favorite way to share products is like Etsy shops. And honestly, from my own community, I have a lot of really talented um, creators in my own community. So it's fun to help them. Yeah. And now, you know, we're talking about the changing nature of creators. TikTok has obviously become an enormous thing. You're like 10 years into the game. How do you feel about TikTok and the rise of culture on TikTok? I love TikTok. I feel like it is so easy to get sucked into TikTok. Um, but if I'm being honest, I'm like so loyal to Instagram stories because I feel like it's so real. And I think that that's what people are wanting from, you know, their favorite creators is they want to feel like they're sitting with you like right here and they want to feel like they're going through your day with you. So I'm actually really excited about like where things are going to head. I'm thinking maybe more live video, live shopping, that sort of thing. And I feel like those are that type of content is where I feel like I thrive because I love like the live interaction. It's interesting that you say that because I feel like the Instagram aesthetic is like very, you know, curated millennial. Yeah. Um, and TikTok is like the, the weird walking down the street, phone floating above the right. head, kind right. of like say whatever you want. Right. Um, but you're saying it's the actually the opposite. I think I'm, I'm speaking about stories mm -hmm. specifically, but I do think there is a way to use Instagram and your feed and your videos and just be extremely real and authentic with them and like barely any production. And I think that that's probably what's refreshing about maybe coming to our page is because it's not really, if you look at my feed, there is no like aesthetic to it. We kind of just post whatever's happening through the day. Yeah, you strike a really good balance of beautiful things and then also being real. Um, 
and you do post a lot about your children, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, I'm curious to know, you know, social media, yeah. famously not great for kids. Mm -hmm. What's your philosophy around parenting and social media? Yeah, I mean, I am excited to see if my kids are like interested in maybe creating their own content one day, but if not, I'm totally open to, I mean, as they grow older, if they're not interested in being on camera, that's totally fine with me. And I think that what's fun is my husband and I have created such a fun dynamic and such a fun relationship where we just share each other. And so we're really focused on that. We have, you know, my mom in the content, my mother-in-law. And so um, it's kind of one of those things, if my kids show an interest in it, then I'm excited to, you know, provide for them and help them out. But if not, then totally understand and just kind of want to support them, whatever they're interested in. Yeah, and you've been at the top for a long time. I mean, seriously, like you've had a really long career, especially given the fact that consumer tastes are ever changing, the algorithms changing, like the God knows the world is changing. Um, do you ever worry about cancel culture and like how do you just stay at the top? Right. Um, I think it's natural to worry about being canceled, especially nowadays. I feel like everyone's been canceled at some point now. Um, but I think that what I've just done through that is just been authentic about where my heart is at with everything that we've created. And so I'm not too worried about it now because I think what I've understood is that I'm probably always going to be like I'm a flavor and not everyone's going to like my flavor and that's okay. And so um, I really try to like hone in on the girls that are interested in being there and then everyone else like it's okay. And so I don't stress about it anymore. Um, but I would say it's it's been like a challenge, but after nine years, you kind of learn to have tough skin. <laughs> yeah, you have faced backlash from, you know, fashion, watchdog, diet Prada. Yeah, all the fun stuff. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what was that experience like? Um, you know, I think that every challenge that I've had um, has really built, like I had to go through those failures to learn. And I feel like that's honestly why we're, I'm here today. Um, and so I don't look at it as like, yes, they were hard, they were challenging, but I feel like I learned so much from those experiences. What has been your biggest learning experience in your career as a professional creator? Let's see, boundaries. I would say boundaries. Um, I feel like I'm really good about kind of shutting the camera off at five and that's my time with my family and my kids um, because it can feel as someone that shows up almost every day online. I mean, I think in the past nine years, I've probably taken less than 10 days off. Wow. Which is probably wild, um, but it's kind of yes, just wild. a part of what I do now. And it's, I don't look at it as a job, like it's just a part of me. And so I love getting on every single day, but I think having those boundaries on the weekends or at five o'clock or kind of just running your, you know, social platform like a business um, has really helped me. I know you did have this marketplace, Keely D, um, and you discontinued it. That was probably a lesson. Can you talk about, you know, when you learn something that, yeah. when you learn that something's not quite the right fit? Sure, I mean, like I said, I think I, I have launched a lot of things and some of them have worked out and some of them have. And um, I think that through that, I've really focused on like the details. And I think in the past, I come from a family of entrepreneurs where, you know, always, creating, uh, my dad has a showroom at the Dallas Market Center, my mom, you know, grew up in San Antonio, um, selling like little trinkets on the street at the El Mercado. And so I've always had this like entrepreneurial spirit about me, but you don't learn until you actually do it. And so I feel like just going through each of my experiences, I've learned to really focus on the details, like don't rush, be patient, and just kind of put your head down and stay focused. Speaking of learning and doing, you make money, you know, both from your fans and then also from brand partnerships. What do you like more? Um, I, I enjoy every aspect of creating content. I think what I love, I love working with brands and kind of telling their story. I think it's really interesting whenever I get on the phone with a brand and like learn about the team behind what's going on or maybe visit like you know, their offices and that sort of thing and really learning about the heart behind the brand and then kind of taking that and, you know, storytelling for them. So what makes you decide to do a brand partnership? Well, I can tell you a fun experience. We had um, Mr. Clean uh, reach out to us and they actually have like a real Mr. Clean and he, they- A living man. A living man. Okay. And they wanted to send him to our house and 
like basically him come teach us like tips and tricks like cleaning hacks and i was like absolutely yes this is the coolest experience. yeah does he and look just like the uh yes cartoon? he is okay. super jacked like, <laughs> and very tan and the nicest guy ever and so it was fun to kind of take opportunities like that and get really creative and you know help tell the story brand very cool as we head into dark times economically, or what's looking like dark times economically, um, how do you think that will affect your career and that of the influencer industry in general? Um, that's a tough question. Um, I would say, you know, I'm not sure. I think every influencer is so different and the way that they monetize and the way that they run their business is so unique to them. Um, and so for us, I feel like my biggest thing is just staying in touch with my audience and listening to what they, they want and kind of filling that gap and just being a service to help them out. You've been um, doing this now for a long time, as we've discussed. What is in the future for you? We are excited about Divi. Um, we're really excited about some retail launches um, and some new product lines. And then as far as like the Danny Austin brand goes, um, you know, I'm really content with where we're at, but of course, like just rolling with the punches and going to get more on TikTok and create more like family content. Um, so I don't know. We'll see. We're excited.